I'm Fern Cotton, and in this show, I'll be hanging out with McBusted, one of the most hotly anticipated supergroups of the modern era. Between them, they've sold over 15 million records and written some of each other's biggest hits. Now McFly and Busted minus Charlie have merged into one all-conquering rock behemoth. Together, they're embarking on an enormous 41-date tour. And I've been granted exclusive access to their inner circle. Am I weird? That guy is an idiot. You in? You in? <laughs> the hornier, the better. <laughs> There'll be difficult questions. Were there disagreements with Charlie? You checked into rehab. How tough was that time for you? What was your lowest point? This is getting dark. Surprise revelations. Something happened that definitely changed me. It affected me in a way that was frightening. Three years ago, I, I really realised that I was struggling. There was never a last gig. One day it was over. And a few tears. I'm not going to leave him because he has a problem. And one of us will go home with a very rock and roll reminder of our special time together. <laughs> this is Fernand McBusted. Busted. It's a complicated story. First, there was Busted. Charlie, Matt and James. Their debut album went triple platinum. They sold over a million copies. And the trio went on to make pop history after selling out a record number of Wembley dates. Yeah! But just as the band were firing on all cylinders, Charlie was gone. I've uh, quit Busted, um, sadly. We always had an understanding between the three of us that if one of us left, like any one of us left, we would all, uh, all quit. The band were finished. Hi, my name's Tom Fletcher, I'm 16. Meanwhile, a chap called Tom, who'd originally auditioned for Busted, formed a brand new band with Danny, Harry and Dougie. Over the past decade, McFly have scored seven number one singles and two number one albums. But success came at a price for both bands. In the busted camp, Matt's been in and out of rehab. And devastated by his band split, James fled to America to lick his wounds. And the McFly boys have had their own struggles, with both Harry and Dougie battling their respective demons. But then, what started as an impromptu jam between friends... ...snowballed into a massive merging of bands. Tickets for the McBusted tour sold out so quickly they were forced to add even more dates. They're now playing over 40, making them one of the biggest music acts around. I've known both bands from TV and radio for over a decade and they're pretty relaxed in my company, so hopefully I can probe in ways that others can't. I want to find out why McBusted have sent the country into such a frenzy. I'm beginning my journey in a rehearsal space in South London where the world's newest supergroup are gearing up for a mammoth tour. Instead of six, there's just five today as Tom's at home with his four-day-old baby Buzz. Oh. I've not seen them all play together yet, so quite excited about it. Let's see if we get their attention. I've only got a couple of hours with them and then I'm chucked out because they're so busy. Hello? That's probably soundproof, so... Matt just looked at me and blanked me. Did anyone else see that? He looked in my eyes and then, hello, hi. No, it's, it's, it's in all of them. It's not in that one, but when it's not in that one. Hey! Hi, hey. hey. hey, guys. Hi, Good to fun. see you all. We're just having a debate. About what? God, I'll help. I think, I think you should make a decision. I'll be the decider. Yeah, Go on. Should it be um, 
Both of you, you know, your bands were kind of coming on those Saturday morning shows yeah. and he, here you are doing it again. It's crazy, amazing, yeah. and brilliant. I miss, the, I miss those Saturday shows. I'm sort of reluctant to talk about them because I'm feeling like the producer's going to go, oh, let's put a clip of that in the please don't do that. <laughs> I'm going on tour with McFly and Buster on their tour bus. We're going to Birmingham, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So. We're with the NEC. <laughs> so here we go, here yeah, we go, go, here we go. go. Oh, dear, that's enough of that. Thank you. As I jam with the boys, it's amazing to think this busted track is over 10 years old. Fire, are you ready for the big finish? Fire, are you ready for the big finish? Yeah! I said, are you ready? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Uh, Who needs Tom anyway? This rock and roll lark's a piece of cake. <laughs> I'm obviously going to be spending a lot of time with you up to the tour, seeing you guys rehearse, but also individually hanging out with you as well. I am worried a bit about it. I think it'll be quite chilled when you're with us, like, individually, I think. But I think potentially together we might. I don't know. Yeah, yeah tour's going to be fun. The, the partying may have uh, calmed down a yeah. little bit, but we, they, we take the health thing to a, a new level oh. of disgustingness. Like, what are we talking? What do you mean? We give each other clonics. No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> we don't. We don't. We don't. Kind of. Are you do. sure? Because all of you have gone really quiet. Over this. <laughs> <laughs> what is I was going to say. We're sorry. No, basically, right. Matt is is like totally into his like nutrition and. Matt was like, oh, you know, I'm going to do this thing. It's called a, a Himalayan saltwater purge. And we we're like, oh yeah, cool. What's that, Matt? And he's like. You know, and he starts lift, listing off the health benefits, and we're all like totally sold. We're like, yeah, okay, cool, let's do it. Right. We just drink a cup of salt water. You no, know, no, like a pint of warm salt water, and you down it on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. Right. And it is basically like a natural, like, uh, clonic. Yeah. Yeah. Show in the video. Oh, I'm really not sure about this. <laughs> <laughs> that was like number 12. You go. <laughs> ready? <laughs> ready? 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 Oh <laughs> my god. Could it get any worse? Tattoo, tattoo roulette, as, tattoo well. roulette okay. as well. Have roulette. you ever played tattoo roulette before? No. no. I'm so imagining you just someone has to have a tattoo. Someone you loses yeah. and you have to do a tattoo oh, that we I don't know if that's what I want to do. Coming up, Dougie opens up about the lowest point in his life. You don't even realise how bad it is until you stop and like, oh man, God. Um, it, got, it got really dark. I'm forced to take part in the band's favourite rock and roll ritual. Last time you played Tattoo Roulette, who was the unlucky one? This is what I ended up getting. Oh, it's big! Yeah, it's big. And I get exclusive backstage access on the McBusted tour. The year I turned 26, I was making so much money, I didn't know what to do with it. I've been given exclusive access to the UK's newest supergroup, McBusted, as they gear up for a massive 41-date tour. And I'm off to meet the youngest member of the band, Essex-born Dougie Pointer. Just 15 when he joined McFly, he's literally grown up in the band. and enjoyed the rock and roll lifestyle a little too much. In 2011, after splitting with the Saturday singer Frankie Sanford, he hit rock bottom and was referred to rehab. But he came out the other side and was crowned king of the jungle. He's now rumored to be dating pop princess Ellie Golding. And by chance, we've recently bought houses two roads from each other. 
So we're hitting some cool antique shops in London to decorate our pads. Dougie! Oh, hi! <laughs> hi. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. You all right? See you. You smell very nice. Again. Thank you very much. <laughs> So, we're going to do some house shopping today. This is my favourite thing to do ever. Awesome, yeah, me too. We're going to be neighbours soon, which is quite exciting. Oh, great. <laughs> what do you mean, oh, great? <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Is there a theme to your house? Are you kind of like 60s or um, shabby chic? It's kind of piratey. Piratey? Yeah, but yes. without it being, not Disney piratey. Let's go. That's quite a piratey thing to have, a sort of a goblet of juice <laughs> at dinner. Do you know what I mean? I really like that. There's a lot I want to ask Dougie, but I know he can be quite guarded. There was a moment, I guess, when you nearly, at a crossroads in your life, didn't make it into McFly. You auditioned for the band unsuccessfully. Yeah. I was like 15, so I was, I was still at school. I was first in line. They were just like, right, OK, play something pop. And so I panicked and was like, I didn't know anything pop. All I knew was these like Blink One Eighty Two songs, and I was like, "Oh, I know, I know Billie Jean." So I started playing Billie Jean, then, you know, do 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 do. But then realised that's the only bit I knew. So I just played that for like two minutes, <laughs> just on repeat, do 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 do. And they were like, "Yeah, we're not gonna have you." But luckily, they couldn't really find anyone else. So they were like, "Oh, we might as well get that guy." <laughs> this is quite cool. Could that go anywhere? I really like that. But then again, I also really like him as well. Oh, where's he going to go? Uh, bedroom? No. No? No. Do you know what I think? I think chicks would dig that. I am a chick, I think, <laughs> and I'm going to say no to the exposed intestine. OK, cool. OK, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll leave that bit out there. Yeah, we'll leave that one there, Doug. <laughs> Within months of joining McFly, Dougie was off around the world gigging with his new bandmates. Pretty exciting for a 15-year-old. You were going off on tour and you were doing big TV shows and gigs. Do you think the other guys who are that bit older than you kind of guided you through it all? Back in the early days, they, they played a lot of different uh, roles for me. They were like best friends, older brothers and, and dads all at, the, uh, all at the same time. And how is it for your mum, like, seeing her little boy go off and do all this? I think it kind of, like, sucked a bit for her mm. because um, two weeks before I joined the band, my dad left without any, any warning. He just, uh, he just got up and, uh, and left. So um, my mum went from having, like, a full house of people to just her and my, uh, and my sister. But luckily, I think it was a bit... The McFly thing was a bit of a distraction as well from, mm. from all the, um, uh, the, the breakup stuff or whatever. So do you think you were kind of like almost looking for another dad figure in the guys as well because they kind of came at the right time for you in that way? I, I did, yeah, t totally. And I had like three of them. Yeah. They, they taught me how to do a lot of things for the first time, not, not, the, not dodgy things. OK. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, like shaving and um, they helped me um, open my first bank account. Who taught you how to shave? Um, Harry taught me how to shave because he had a beard when he was like four. Really? He doesn't yeah. look that hairy. Who was the, the worst influence out of the band on you? I think, uh, I think maybe, I think probably Harry. We were, we were quite bad for each other. Mm. Ha Harry doesn't have a stop button. He's kind of all or nothing, Harry, isn't he? Yeah. We are going to a taxidermy shop next. Um, Is this something that you're quite passionate about, you're into? Um, yeah, I can't, I kind of dig anything weird. There wasn't enough weird stuff back there. Right. So, um... It's too normal. It's too, a little too normal. So, yeah, we're going to go and find some weirder things. And you can't get any weirder than stuffed animals. Sick. Wow. Oh my goodness. I've never been in one of these places before. This is quite extraordinary. This is nuts. So have you got much of this in your house already, this sort of thing? I have, like, a lot of skulls. Like, this kind of thing. What on earth is that? Siamese lambs, um, <gasps> oh. 18, 19, 1900. Born with a cyclops eye on the other side. Just Whoa, um, it's got another eye. Yeah. That is the strangest thing I have ever seen in my life. But this is typical sort of Victorian kind of freak show. Is that real? Was it actually real. Yeah. born like that? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. 
Whatever happened to like <laughs> buying a vase? Uh, I don't know. As we head home, I feel like it's the right time to ask Dougie about one of the most difficult periods of his life. When you were going through your bad times, what was your lowest point where you just thought, I've got to make a change here or something's got to happen? But it wasn't even necessarily me who made the decision. It was somebody else who um, kind of made the decision like that enough was enough. And before I knew it, I was, I was, in, I was, I was in rehab and then, um, and then that's when I decided that I wanted, um, I wanted it. I wanted to uh, to, to knock it all on on the head. Because um, it kind of you don't even realise how bad it is until you stop. And oh man, God, um, it got it got really dark. I don't, I don't know how much worse it could have got. I kind of like don't really want to want to know. I'm just I'm thankful it kind of um, happened when it did. And it, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, it's all, it's all good. So when you were getting your life straight and saying goodbye to drink and drugs, how tough was that for you? Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it's like, the, it's, the, it's the most life-changing thing I think I've ever done. Um, it's the best thing I've, I've ever yeah. done. Um, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's tough, but uh, I don't know. This is getting dark. <laughs> you're, you're getting, you're getting deep. <laughs> well, it worked. It's all good because yeah, yeah. you know here you are now, living proof that you can go to those depths and then. Yeah, I didn't die. As news of Dougie's battle with addiction emerged, his bandmates and his mum Sam were increasingly concerned. How did she take what, ev what everyone was writing in the press and stuff? Did she take it with a pinch of salt? Did she talk to you about it privately? She's like super protective and. Um... And she doesn't know what's true and what, yeah. what isn't. And, and when you're in like a, a place like that, like contact's really, really hard. When you're um, when you're in when you're in a mental home, <laughs> it's mm. uh, having contact's really hard. So um, did she come and visit you? Was she allowed? Yeah, yeah, you're allowed visitors yeah. and, and stuff. And you can have phone calls and stuff, yeah. but just not. Um, it's not as easy as like you know texting. Um, I think it is really admirable what you've done. I think it's really cool. I think it's awesome. And also just to see you in a happy place as well. Thank you very much. And you're in a happy relationship now? <laughs> oh, nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> but well, you are though. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, all, all, all's good in that area as well. Is that a situation where it's out there but you're not necessarily happy for it to be out there that you're with Ellie? <laughs> I don't know how, like, how much I like kind of, um, Talking about it. Yeah, no, I take. Um, I, well, I respect that. I respect that. Um, but yeah, all's good. All, all's good. All is very, very good. Good. Is it your decision to keep it relatively private because of what you've experienced having a relationship in the public eye previously? Mm, I don't even think. I, I don't even think I really thought about it too much. I think it's just a bit of a no-brainer that I. It's just like. It's just normal, right? It's like whatever anyone else is getting up to. Yeah. You're just having a normal relationship like a guy in his 20s would. Yeah. Apart from loads of people want to know about it. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and you've yeah. got a really tough job yeah. on your hands, keeping it as private as you can. You're yeah. doing a really good job so far. Thank you. You are? Really? Yeah, like, no, everyone's like, are they together, are they not? People are still wondering. Uh, maybe we should keep it at that. That's kind of like, that's more interesting, isn't it? It's your oh, relationship. They, it's up to you. Yeah. Totally up to you. I've kind of given it away now, though. Haven't I? Yeah, <laughs> completely given it away. Yep, totally given it away. Coming up, Matt and his wife Emma Willis open up about their troubled past. If I wanted to drink at 10 o'clock at a photo shoot, yeah. I bloody would. I never talk about it this time. Dougie joins Bye. new dad Tom back at school. Danny said, Dinosaur, what shall we do today? And I foolishly play tattoo roulette with the boys. One of us is going to get something on us for the rest of our lives. OK, okay let's do this. Oh. Ah! <laughs> Two of the biggest British bands of recent years have merged into one super-sized supergroup, Muck Busted. And I'm hanging out with them as they prepare to gig as one unit. 
So I'm off to meet Matt, who of course is married to the gorgeous Emma Willis. So I want to see how they juggle their crazy, hectic showbiz lives and a family. One third of busted Matt Willis is famous for dizzying highs and crashing lows. In 2005, he met TV presenter Emma. But then busted split, and he also met rehab. A year later, king of the jungle and rehab again. In 2008, it all changed. A reported blowout with old friend Amy Winehouse saw him in rehab for the last time. Finally, clean and sober, he marries Emma. They have a family and he becomes a successful actor. Now he's back in a band, are Matt and Emma prepared for what lies ahead? Matthew! Ben, hello. How are you, Matt? I'm great, how Good are you? Good to see you. Come in. Thank you very much. Hi. Look at the Brit Awards just casually up there that I've spotted. Casual, casual, slightly dirty. Oh, actual Brit Awards. Yeah, in the name of Matt J. Oh, there he is. Which was my, my busted name. That's amazing. Yeah. Hi, wife! Hi, my <laughs> God! <laughs> Are oh, you gorgeous lady? Oh, yeah. <coughs> so nice to see you. Mm. Sorry, Matt, we're just having a moment. <laughs> Please, this is, uh, this is everything I hoped would happen. <laughs> <laughs> you both got such huge, amazing moments this year with The Voice and then the McBusted tour, so that must just be a wonderful thing for your family. So much exciting stuff going on. I know. Yeah, it's, it's kind quite of um, frightening. It's a little bit. It is definitely a change of pace. Back to, to, to last year, you know, this kind of... Um, and also, it's kind of... The thought of having to go on tour for quite a long time is quite a little bit scary. Oh, stop yeah. it. Sleep, sleeping sleeping in happen. every day, He's every like room that. service. I'm going to miss you guys so much. See ya! Like, do? running out of the door! <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, yeah. so, touring life kicks off and you're back on the road and it's it's all good. It's going to be an exciting time. Yeah, man. Yeah, it should be, it should be good. Like, I mean, it's, um, it's exciting. And Are it kind of nervous, feels... Are you though? About the tour? Well, I know you've kind of you've done it, but it was ten years ago. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The thought of mucking up's always scary. Yeah. But um, but I'm sure I'll muck up on the first night, and then I'll be over that. Yeah. I think the ner the nervous bit was, is this going to fall flat on its face? Mm. But luckily, it's gone pretty well. Are you worried about Matt going on tour at all? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. What is weird is that I when we met. It was their last ever tour, so I kind of went to bits of it, saw all these kind of young, like really young, 13-year-old girls screaming, you know, not not a worry in the world. Those girls are now 23, 24. Oh, come <laughs> on. Those girls have now <laughs> blossomed. <laughs> from Look as he kisses the hand. I yeah. love you, wife. Yeah, I love you, from, wife. From, you know, probably teenagers going through all that to these beautiful, stunning... Uh, young women. Needless to say, I'll be on as much as that tour. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also read somewhere that, Emma, when you first saw a photo shoot when Matt joined McBusted and he'd shaved a bit of his hair or something, you were like, oh, God, is he, is he going back into his band ways? <laughs> yeah. Was that a scary moment? Yeah, and then he came home the other night with a fat mohawk on his head. <laughs> I was yeah. like, what has he done? <laughs> oh, my God, is this my life again now? The, the oddest thing is seeing pictures of him doing busted faces, you know, because he's always had his mouth open <laughs> screaming or like, his tongue out or something. I'm like, you're 30, dude. He came home and his actual words to me were, and I was like, what? What are you doing? He went, listen, you've got to stop thinking of me as Matt. I am Matt at home, but in the band, uh, I am Matt from Busted. Oh, yes! <laughs> yes! Like, yes! What? Yeah, man, totally. Really? <laughs> are, 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 we not yeah, like, are we not like a grown-up <clears throat> pair of adults with no, two kids no, in a family not. home? No. I'm like, not right, when okay, I step out the door. We are back oh. there again. Yep, and it's back there again I want to go. Because after Busted, obviously, you had a tough time yourself. You yeah. checked into rehab. Yeah. You had to sort yourself out in that way. Yeah. How, how tough was that time for you? Um, yeah, it was, it, was it was really tough. Yeah. It was really tough. You know, it was kind of a, it's never easy for anybody. I tried to quit drinking quite a few times, you know. It's, it's, it's a different thing saying, like, I think I need to clear myself up a little bit. Yeah. And actually going, actually, no, I can never do this again. I kind of, um, this is a massive problem in my life. Mm. And um, 
But then, you know, like then when you when you remove that problem, everything else is great. And has it made you stronger as a couple going through that together? I think from the outside, when you're looking at it, you, you, it's quite easy to see a young kid in a boy band who um, has a problem. I can't, I'm sorry, I'm getting ready. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it was a tough time for you guys. It was a really tough time for you guys. You know, unfortunately, I just was in a in a situation where I could do what I wanted, and I was also had loads of money. You know, yeah. so it's kind of and no um, one to say no to him. Yeah. And no one yeah. to say no. You know, and if I wanted to drink at ten o'clock at a photo shoot, yeah. I bloody would. You know, exactly. so um, you know, and it's kind of like that was acceptable. It just takes different amount of times for different people. Some people notice it immediately and do something about it, and some people try to get away with it for as long as possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. end up going a few yeah. times, yeah, yeah. and then they suddenly yeah. go, oh, right, OK. And yeah, how was that okay, for really you as the wife? Were you just kind of tr trying to be there as supportive as you could? It's kind of, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because he went to rehab when I'd known him for three months. So initially, it, it was, you know, we hadn't known each other very long. Mm -hmm. He went to rehab, and it was just, I don't know. I mean, I was kind of in this whirlwind with him, and I, I you don't really think about it. And then. The more time goes along, then he went again, and it's like this is actually. Firstly, our relationship is quite serious because we've been together for a couple of years now, and and this isn't just a kid that needs a couple of weeks break. This is someone you know that that does genuinely have a problem, and um, it just takes time. Yeah. But <laughs> I never talk about it. This is like no, I know. It's hard. Um, but you have to ask yourself. Um, do you? <laughs> I can't. Talk. You're right. Um, I'm not going to leave him because he has a problem. You have yeah. to stick together and, and do it. Yeah. So silly. No, you're not. It's a big deal, and it must be so wonderful to now look at your lovely husband doing the thing he loves doing completely I clear. Know. And he's very yeah. boring. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't being boring the best though? Yeah. But I tell you what, it's I'll so take good. I'll take boring over the alternative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'll take the tattoos and the motorbikes over. Yeah. All the other stuff. Of course, of course. Does Matt come home kind of completely buzzed up after he's been rehearsing, and it's like amazing to see him in a band again, and just to see the process of, you know, the talk of what might possibly happen and and watching him and how excited he got, to then it actually happening, to then the tickets going on sale and seeing him shit himself about yeah. whether those tickets would sell, and yeah. then finding out that they'd sold out immediately and more dates were being released. He's just like, oh, I can't believe it. Mm. He's like a kid. It's like we've had another baby. Like, he's that excited. <laughs> <laughs> and how is it doing the band life with a clear head, being sober? Is it a very different experience? Like, the second busted tour, I can't even really remember being on it. You know, so um, so it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be good to actually know what I'm doing on stage. Yeah, it's the best time for all of us for this to happen. Mm. You know, we've kind of all been through little bits of shit, and it kind of um, and now it's kind of, it all feels like everything's going up. Yeah. You know, so um, it's a good time. It's really lovely to see you both in the most wonderful place. Gorgeous. Thanks, Thanks for coming. McBusted have only been a supergroup for a short time, but one person who's always had his feet firmly in both camps is Tom. You I you... Who, as well as writing for McFly, also penned tracks like Crash the Wedding with James for Busted. And songs aren't his only forte, as he and Dougie have teamed up to write a kid's book, which today they're reading at a local school. I'll be spending more time with Tom later, so this is just a quick catch-up. I've not seen Tom since the birth of his little son, Buzz, so I'm imagining he might be quite tired. Morning, chaps. Morning. How Hi. are you? How are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Tom, I haven't seen you since you had your baby. Yes, which is why I look like this. You look fresh-faced. You look surprisingly fine. Really? Yeah. Are you shattered? I'm exhausted. 
How old's Little Buzz now? He is 11 days. Are you loving it so far? I'm loving it. It's the most weird mix of emotions I could yeah. possibly, like, it's, you can't describe it. Yeah. I'm so happy for you. It's the Thank most wonderful you. news ever. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous. Amazing. So you guys have got your book, The Dinosaur That Pooped the night. Planet. Whose idea was this? Well, it was a joint effort, really, mm. wasn't it? It was yeah. just something that we said it was, once it and It started off as, it. A, as it was a joke that became a reality. So you've done this sort of thing a few times then, doing some reading. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. Like, it's, it's actually, you get really nervous because kids tell you the truth. Oh, yeah. And they just, like, they beat us up. They literally beat us. You know when you're just completely intimidated by five-year-olds? You're like, <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to go in there now. Yeah, oh, you wait. Well, should we do this? Let's, Let's do, it. do it. Let's go. Come on, then. Not something I expected to be doing with McBusted, but, hey, I suppose you've got to build your fan base somehow. All right, we're going in. Oh, my God, I'm a bit nervous as well. Uh, I don't know, man. Come on, Doug, after you. You do it. Shotgun. <laughs> All right, come on, should we go in? Right, should we do this? You look really creepy at the window. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good. We've come to talk to you about dinosaurs and poop today. Yes. Who wants to hear the story, then? Yes! Yeah? Come on then, do you want to come and sit down on the floor? The Dinosaur That Pooped a Planet, by him and that one. One day they were bored, they had no games to play. Danny said, Dinosaur, what should we do today? We could mow the lawn, we could tidy the place, we could do our chores, or we could go to space. <laughs> but you mustn't forget to have lunch, said their mummy. But it knew there was only one thing it could do. To get them back home, it needed to... <laughs> the end. Yay! They're getting absolutely mopped in there. How old are you? How old are we? That's rude. How old do you think we are? Yeah, guess. Uh, 65 million. That was the cutest thing ever. So lovely, such a cute little book. The kids love the boys, so it was just it's heartwarming all round. Sorry, I went all soppy there for a moment. I think it's time to meet someone who is still enjoying the more traditional trappings of being in a successful band. And this is where he lives. Hello. Hi, it's Fern. Hi, Fern. Hi. Hi. Great. Can I cut my really close up on the camera? Sorry. <laughs> Shall I come in? Come on in. Oh, we're going through the gate. Hosh. McFly's Bolton born guitarist Danny Jones is the rock and roller of the group. He's an avid DJ and is engaged to Miss England 2007, no less. He's enjoyed the lifestyle but managed to keep it in check. I reckon this house has seen some good parties. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Well, really well, thank you. Nice this is my fiance. Thank you. Thank you. This is your home. Gorgeous. Yes. Welcome, welcome. It's wonderful. Your discs on the wall. Yeah, I've only just re uh, recently put them up. Is it a bit much to have it? No. That's the. Are you this sure? is living the dream. <laughs> that is like totally have them on the wall. Okay. And then this is for the McBusted one here. Of course. Yeah. Space. Yeah. My only other outside writing is One Direction. Oh, cool. I didn't, wait, I didn't even know you did that. Me and Tom wrote uh, I Would for them on their last oh, album. Wow. And on the new album, uh, I wrote and produced Don't Forget Where You Belong. That's amazing. Number six on their album, yeah. And, um, I, but I was freaking out. I was like, oh my God, like, do you remember when I couldn't sleep because of it? Because I was like, yeah. I don't know, I had this thing where everybody was going to hear my production. Because it's obviously the biggest album of the year. And I was like, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing it and it just freaked me out a bit. Really? But yeah, it's been, um, it's been a really amazing like um, journey, that, because we don't really do outside writing, so it's really cool. And they're, yeah. they're a nice guy. Now was over the other night writing, so oh, really? it's really nice to do, yeah. Also, well, he's writing for their new album yeah. at the moment. Oh, right. Yeah, we've got a really cool song. Time to see a bit more of the house. Um, so this is our kitchen. This is our kitchen. Lovely. <laughs> Do you know what? We have the best house parties in this area here. Why have yeah. I never come to one? You can't. Why <laughs> me next time? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look at my beer tap. You've 
got a beer tap in the kitchen. Gas cooler. Oh my god. I really wondered about this because you were saying a minute ago you're feeling a little bit ropey today, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slightly hungover. It's because I'm not eating as well. How is that going to fit in when you go on tour? Is it going to be? Is it going to be a bit boring for you if, if you're the only one that really drinks? Because yeah. you've got a lot of people now that are teetotal in the band. Yeah. Uh, Matt and Dougie and, uh, and, Harry. and Harry will probably... I, I feel like a naughty school kid if I have a, like a, if I come in hungover. Mm. I feel like, oh. And they've all been to the gym and they're all eating. I'm like, yeah. I just want like some <laughs> junk food. Has that been weird then fitting into that new dynamic of them not drinking and you still you know, being a bit of a party boy when you want? Yeah, I mean, it's getting easier now. Because I think um, Dougie's coping with it. At first, like we and we sort of like didn't drink in front of him and things. Yeah. We didn't have drinks in like the um, well, we did a bit. in the dressing rooms. We d we drunk a bit, didn't yeah. we? Because we were like, should we not drink? Should we drink? Yeah, it's tricky. Because would it make him yeah. feel uncomfortable if we change? We've we never been in that situation can't. before, so we didn't really know what to do. But yeah, we just sort of did what we felt was right. Yeah. But yeah, I think um, we don't think about it now. We just and do it because he's, he's he's better. And how was it for you seeing someone that? You know, you love as a mate, it's like a brother to you, go through hell and back. I went on autopilot, I think. I think we all did, because uh, we were just there for him. We just yeah. had to be. We didn't have any idea, like, what the scale of it, did we? Yeah, I, I, I mean, he could, come, he could come in and I didn't even notice that he'd had a drink. He masked it so, so well, didn't he? Mm. So yeah. it, was probably, it was quite a shock, wasn't it, when it all when it all... Yeah, because I, I, the, the day he's like, mate, I need to be, I'm going into rehab, I was like, oh. Oh. He was scared about telling you, wasn't he? He was scared about telling me, yeah. Why? Because Danny's really anti-drugs. Yeah, right. Him off. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, it's, it's fine and I, um, I understand it more now and I've yeah. learnt a lot about it. I've learnt a lot that, um, that I can, you know, tell other people. He's, he's proved himself to be a very strong human being. Coming up, Danny gives me the goss about the birth of McBusted. For some reason, I was the last to find out about this. My manager, Fletch, thought that I wouldn't want to do it. Really? And the moment I've been dreading. Into the hat they go. It's tattoo roulette time. I'm getting pangs of anxiety. So scared! <laughs> oh. Come on! No, please no. <laughs> Busted and McFly have joined forces to become McBusted. <laughs> And today, I'm round at guitarist Danny's with his fiance Georgia. When this idea first came about with your band joining, was anyone a bit apprehensive? I'm not sure about this. Well, for some reason, I was the last to find out about this. Oh, I wonder why. Why? Anything to do with not reading your emails? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're here, Georgia, giving us the real underlying truth. I, <laughs> I don't know why. I know why. It's not why I didn't know. For some reason, our manager, Fletch, thought that I wouldn't want to do it. Really? Yeah, and I don't know why. When Fletch sat me down on the tour bus and he says, um, just so you know, Danny, I've, I've come to you last because um, I, I wanted to check with everybody else and I, I sort of knew that everybody else would be, you know, for doing it. I was worried that, um, that you wouldn't really want to do it, like, it wouldn't be your thing. And I was like, what? Uh, going on tour with Busted, you know, joining the two bands. And I just went, fuck yeah! <laughs> you know, it was amazing. It was like... I was so excited, and he was yeah, like, "Wow, this is amazing! This is all going to work then." Because Relief. I was, and I don't know why. He, I don't know why he felt like I was not going to want to do it. I don't know. Um, What's the story um, with McFly after this? The McFly album sort of got put on pause. Was that hard to let that go for a second? So hard. We were like, "Can we not release our album first? Yeah. You know, and and then because the promoter offered us a tour so early, we were like, "Oh, we've got to do it." You know, and some of the McFly fans weren't really happy with no, us. No, they were and it's an incredible album. It's a band just being great at... Well... Oh, Big Ed again. Big Ed. <laughs> Weren't me discs. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just proud of... Uh, oh, that's so when good. You, when, you see the, when you hear the album, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so that will be released at some point, do you think? You're just shelving it for now and then... Yeah, like, we've got three albums that we've not released. Like, we've got three waiting. But with just a few weeks to go before the big tour, it's McBusted that's the priority. The boys are deep into rehearsals. And today, with James away in New York working on a musical, I'm meeting with the remaining five. Oh, and there's one other thing. 
day someone's getting a tattoo they don't want. And it could be me. Oh. Hey, hey. 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 You're right, guys. Hey. 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 up. Nice. So, Start you all all right up. today? Good yourself? Yeah, I'm good. I'm slightly dreading what's in store because I know that today is the day. It is Tattoo Roulette Day. <laughs> You're like covering your tongue. I know, because I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all vulnerable and scared. <laughs> Last time you played Tattoo Roulette, who was the unlucky one? Uh, Tom. Tom. <laughs> that, that would be me. Yeah. What happened? This is what I ended up losers. getting. Oh, it's big. Yeah, it's yeah. big. This seems like quite a rock and roll thing to do within your setup. Is this as rock and roll as it gets? <laughs> Tragically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you sort of tick off any cliche rock and roll <laughs> things over the years, like tellies out of windows? Oh, you did. I, I threw a television out of window. Oh, you did the telly out the window? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Thank you very much. It was kind of provoked, though. I was in, I was in a hotel room with an NME journalist, right. and they were like, this is pretty lame. You know, and I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and I did. And it was like, oh. But Daddy. also, I threw it out of the window, and <clears throat> like outside the window was our tour bus. Oh, God. So it went just the other side of the tour bus and exploded oh. on the street, made Ooh. such a big noise. Like, it sounded like a bomb had gone off. Like, oh, it really did make a big noise. Yeah. Me and the journalist ran away. <laughs> <laughs> And so we went back in, the police were there. They were going to take me to the police station. And then our tour manager, Sweet, Sweet Talk, the policeman, with some tickets and a meet and greet for the next Shut night up. in oh, that city. So, so uh, 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 should, should I say that? It's yeah. You've said it. The police. Said it. But, um, but yeah, so, um, so they, the next day, and suddenly I was standing there, and there was the policeman with their kids going, oh. Hi, Matt, could you have a photo with their kids? I was like, yep. Yeah, have a thousand yeah, pictures. Exactly. I'll whatever sign you your T-shirt, your face, you want, whatever. You whatever. <laughs> right, the small matter of tattoo roulette. Talk me yeah. through it. We put a piece of paper into Matt's hat that say no. So if you pick out a no, you're safe. Oh, you. Please let me get a no. Like, four no's. Two, two old shit. shit. Two old shit. Two shit. So if you get an old shit, you are put into a head-to-head, -head, rock paper scissor battle in the tattoo shop. Oh, I feel properly sick about this guy. Right, so oh, in, into the hat they go. I like can I please go first and get out of the way? Yes, you can. This is the worst. Um, one of us is going to get something on us for the rest of our lives. Forever. Okay, let's do this. Oh. Ah! <laughs> 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 I'm bad. Yeah, I'm going to go. Wait, wait. Yeah, go. On. Go. Come on. Oh. No, please no. Please no. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> yes! I want to go next. I want to go next. Oh, no! Go, go. That's an old shit, that's an old shit. It's an old shit, I can feel it, I can feel it, I can feel it, I can feel it. Yeah! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, Doug's going now. Oh, oh, my God, my heart is pounding. Ready? My heart is literally dumping, right? It's going to get a train yeah. rush, isn't it? Oh, no, I can't. Oh, no! Next. Me. Oh, God. <laughs> I want to cry. <laughs> so Matt's off the tattoo parlour. Oh, fuck it out. <laughs> but will it be Danny or Tom joining him? Are you ready? I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's an already. I've just know it's going to be, isn't it? No! 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 Yeah. In yeah. honour of frogs. In honour of frogs. Right, all those in favour of the frog. Say aye. 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 Next time, Matt or Danny, who will get the frog tattoo? One, two, three. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I catch up with the remaining three members of the band. Sometimes I'd be like, whoa, a bit too drunk. <laughs> that must have been so hard to deal with for the boys. There was never a last gig. One day it was over. And I have exclusive backstage access to the boys on tour. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Is that as good for you as it was good for me? 